Welcome to Pantheon Rise of the Fallen Community q and I am Jamie Savanya Henry, and we have with us Creative Director Chris Joppa Perkins to answer your questions. These questions were gathered ahead of time from the community on Discord and the official forums. Um, and if we have a little bit of time at the end of this session, Joppa may take a few questions live. Ben will gather those. Um, First, let's hear from Joppa about what the team has been working on and how things have been going. Maybe talk a little bit about the upcoming patch. Mm. We'll be working on season three, the uh, the land of blood and snow. Um, I think most people are pretty aware of what we're referring to there, the place we're referring to. It's usually uh, a place where a bunch of, of orcs tend to hang out. So we've been working really hard on that area, getting that ready from the environment to the orcs, um, to itemization, the uh, NPC abilities, uh, placement of those things, been making some really cool updates to the, uh, yeah, I'm glad some of you got the hang the hangout part, um, making some updates to the layout of that area. You can expect it like Mad Run, but even more so to be a, a little bit more fleshed out. Um, a little bit of a larger area in general with more places to discover and um, really excited about that area. Uh, we've got some work still to do on dialing in our uh, climate because that is a an extreme climate area. So the first time the frigid climate will be coming back into play. So super excited about getting one of those differentiators in place. Um, and uh, yeah, this next patch uh, coming up has a lot of uh, work that we've done on cleaning up the stacking situation. Uh, it's a bit of a meme going around right now. People with 42,000, you know, grip of shales uh, on them and things like that. So I've gotten a ton of that cleaned up. Um, and they just kind of made a lot of that logic better uh, just in general. Um, we've done uh, a little bit of... Um, Oh, one big one is we ran into a little bit of an issue with our latest Unity upgrade, which is what Prod is on right now. So the client that you guys are all playing, there's, uh, with more people testing, as is usually the case, when you've got a lot of people playing and banging on something, you're going to see things that you don't always see. And um, a pretty significant leak, like a, a memory leak going on or a, a graphical um, leak that uh, was introduced in that version of Unity. So we've actually had to step back one, um, which was not something we wanted to do, but definitely something that we needed to do for stability's sake. So we've get, we're getting kind of the kinks of that worked out as well as we're going into um, this next patch. But um, just for thoroughness sake, that's one of the, the things we were having to work on. Um, yeah, and we'll I'll, I'll wait uh, I'll wait till we get a little bit closer to that patch and kind of pour a lot into the patch notes. You guys can pour over it on your own time. Um, but lots of lots of stuff coming up with the new patch. Lots of fixes, lots of fixes that I very much appreciate. You guys will too. Mm -hmm. All right, let's get started with some questions. Um, right out of the gate. For multi-group based content such as Agonoct, could we implement an Agonoct 1, Agonoct 2, Agonoct 3, etc.? Um, various degrees of difficulty that spawns in order <laughs> so that players can test difficulty ramp on a greater scale instead of having to wait for patches and changes to get content where we want it to be. Yeah. What do you think? So we're actually planning on doing something relatively similar to this once we get to that point, that point being specifically when we're focused on balance testing. It's not really where our focus is right now. It's not really where our resource time is being spent. Um, so while we are gathering data and absolutely gathering data, um, I've gotten quite a bit of it on Agonoct and just Mad Run in general. Um, once we get to the point where we're ready to really start digging into that, we're gonna be introducing um, not only uh, things like what is described in this question, but also just having a lot more focused testing sessions um, on you know more rapid iteration of these things uh, once we get to that stage. So, yes. Ooh, cool. 
All right, with Hangor coming in with season three, just in case you guys missed the hints, um, will we get a look at acclamation? Yes. Yeah, it's so Hangor is a frigid climate. Uh, so you're going to get to experience some of the visuals of that climate, the you know the audio of that kind of snowy, frigid area. Um, there will be uh, things that you need to itemize yourself with to negate and protect yourself from the negative effects of that climate. So yeah, that that system is uh, is coming. Um, is it the current intention to have a single starter zone or multiple? And if it's the latter, will this split occur based on each group race groupings or groupings of a certain race? I mean, we've talked a little bit about this before, but I think that um, with the some of the scoping that we've talked about, that maybe a refresh might be in order. Mm. Yeah, so... Yes, there has been some rescoping in terms of like launch zones and things like that. But the, the current intention is still to have a single starter area for um, for each race. So each race would have their own kind of unique area that is is um, reflective of them uh, to start in. Some of those will be a little closer than others to one another. Uh, the gnomes and the dwarves, for example, Skyhold is kind of parked really close to where Kadasa is. And so you, you'll probably see some sharing of the initial starting land between those two races. But yeah, still very much the intention for each race to have their own starting area. Um, is there going to be spell reagents required to cast some spells? And if so, are these planned to be collected off of mobs or purchased from a vendor? Yes, 100%. Uh, some of them are already in-game, kind of as pointers. So bone fragments, it's called out here. Bone fragments do currently drop. Those are going to be important for necromancers. Summoners will have their own re different regions that they'll need for summoning and strengthening their... Archimentals, uh, rogues will depend on regions for poisons. Rangers are going to depend on regions for their um, arrow coatings. Um, and there's lots of other examples I could list. But yes, regions will be a thing. And it's going to be a combination of looting these things, buying the primitive PCs, crafting them, finding them in loose loot or in containers, things like that. Will we ever get a tooltip definition of the debuffs in game, like disorient, fatigue, weakened, etc., or will we have to sort of experiment and figure out what they do on our own? Hmm. So this question specifically referring to the state debuffs, like that's the ones they they listed: disoriented, fatigued, weakened. Those are states. So um, those are a little bit different. They, they don't functionally feel or look different right now, but they, they are, and they, they will certainly become more uh, distinct from normal buffs and debuffs. Um, so right now, and, and the plan for that system is you can put a target, or you yourself or another player can be put into these states. So weakened state, off balance, surprise, disoriented, dazed, things like that. And this state is able to be exploited or capitalized on. Um, by another player if you're you know both fighting the npc or npcs can actually um exploit you know a state on you or another player uh themselves um the key here i guess in this answer is we we plan to clean those up so that they can be seen and understood more as these unique states of being that you can see in the ui and you can um we, in other words we don't want you to have to be on like um a voice chat, you know, using voice comms to to coordinate when something is in a state or when you're in a state and you're trying to organize around that. We want to make it a lot easier to see and understand and respond to in game. Um, and but as far as like communicating that, uh, the intention is that in your abilities, in the description of your abilities, you'll be able to see 
if that ability causes one of these states or if that ability can can act or um, exploit one of these states. Um, but it's ultimately going to be up to the players to, you know, kind of put together that overall understanding of their own arsenal, the arsenal that other players have, communicate those synergies, um, and then certainly learn how to respond to it when NPCs are using those things against them. Uh, there's not going to be a whole lot of hand-holding there in terms of charting how all that system, how all the interplays there. Will the level cap be raised past 31 for season three? And to, to be hmm. clear, that there isn't really a level cap. It's just really, really hard to get up there. It's a hell level. It's it's our first hell level. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I, I, I'm looking at you, Say, exactly. <laughs> um, most likely, yes. Most likely it will be raised to, to 35. Um, that may not be right at the beginning of season three, but um, that's probably going to be what the next level cap jump is. There's a little bit of reworking that we need to do with the experience code um, to kind of remove the, the current hell level that exists, th which was put in initially on purpose as a wall, as a veritable wall. Um, so we're going to rejig a little bit of that. And uh, no, there will not actually be hell levels. That is, hell levels are not part of the plan. That's just more of a tongue-in-cheek thing um but uh yeah we'll be we'll be making that change sometime in season three most likely are we gonna make it a hard cap or are we gonna let them like say actually it'll, it'll be a hard cap it it? oh good yeah oh good it'll, it'll be whatever the caps end up being as we move along they're they're intended to be hard caps to you know keep players kind of in the realm of the content that's available ultimately until we get enough content to take you to max level and then you know, it'll be however you want to, however you want to roll, however how you want to go. That's that's good news for those guys who cannot help themselves. Yeah, they're still trying though, right? Okay, would you be able to, or are you going to have mobs spawning and pathing all over walls and ceilings? Mad Run looks terrifyingly awesome right now, and that would push it over the edge. What are your thoughts? Yeah, it would be really cool. And technically, technically it would be possible to do something like that, but it's something that we're really not likely to do because it adds a ton of complexity, a ton of, of like considerations for things like pulling and trains and issues with just mob pathing in general. Mob pathing, NBC pathing can be a really tricky thing to nail down in a very consistent way. Um, and introducing all of that kind of stuff while cool would probably take us into a realm of, of over complexity that we really shouldn't be wrestling with um the the only exception to that would be d down the road potentially introducing npc pathing for climbable surfaces um and that's something that we're still we're still considering i mean it at the end of the day whether npcs climb um or npcs are able to just you know kind of get to you somehow uh once you've once you've finished climbing or knock you off the wall things like that we're still kind of playing with the give and takes the trade-offs there as far as performance and um just overall kind of jank that that introduces and uh gonna be making a call on that as we move further along but i i can say pretty with almost a full confidence that we're not going to have mobs pathing all over you know every wall and ceiling and all that kind of stuff yeah, we got to get him just walking on the floor right first. Now, that doesn't mean that there's not special kind of spawning events that we can have where spiders, you know, can spawn and lower themselves down and things can, you know, fall from the ceiling and stuff like that. Those I would put in a different category than having actual nav mesh on the ceiling that mobs are interacting with. And uh, yeah. So spiders could fall from the ceiling. We just can't have them crawling all over the walls. I mean, yeah, essentially. At some point in the nearest nearish future, or at least before launch, will VR stop using the 15 minute respawn for most mobs, especially named? People <laughs> are taking advantage of that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Right, right now, respawn timers are uh, dialed in completely with like testing in mind, not 
how they will be, especially when it comes to like bosses and named NPCs and things like that. Um, yeah. So yes, that will eventually change and, and be dialed in to be more appropriate for, for a launch kind of a, a thing. But right now it's 100% with testing in mind. Yeah, you guys need surprises. Will only rangers have access to ranged weapons? If other classes will have access, will they be viable as main weapon with corresponding techniques? Hmm, that's a good question. Um, other classes will be able to use ranged weapons, and that will include general ranged weapon techniques. Um, so not just the ranger. The differences are this. Number one, only rangers will have class abilities related to, to ranged weaponry, and only rangers will have class-specific techniques for ranged weapons. So if you imagine a warrior, for example, being able to use a bow, yes, they will. Um, and there will be some gener generic techniques for the bow that the ranger or that the warrior can use, but there's not going to be any warrior specific bow techniques that have like, in the same way that something, you know, the difference between like heavy slash right now versus like essence harvester, essence harvester is a dire Lord specific weapon technique, um, which, which kind of gives it that special kind of class touch on that weapon uh non-rangers are not going to have ranged weapon techniques that are class specific and neither will they have core class abilities that that are uh centered around ranged weapons but they will be able to wield bows they will be able to use general weapon or ranged weapon techniques and the cool thing about our ranged combat system is that if you have a bow equipped or you have a ranged weapon equipped you actually can transition seamlessly between your ranged and your melee weaponry um, as you move around in combat. So if you back away from a target, you can always cancel auto attack. So you don't, you don't attack the target at range, but you will automatically transition to your bow and fire your bow as you move away from your target. And you'll automatically switch to your melee weapons as you move within melee range of your target, which kind of makes this exempt from the, at least the current constraint on weapon switching in combat, which is likely to change soon. Um, but, but regardless that, that natural switching of the weaponry between ranged and melee is just part of the basic, uh, ranged weapon system. That is very cool. Love that. So there are halberds in the game that say that they can be used by a dire Lord, but the dire Lord does not have a pull arm skill. Uh, so their accuracy with it makes it unusable. Uh, will they have that skill in the future, or is it a mistake in the game now? We'll call it a mistake. We'll call it a mistake. Pole arms are going to be transitioning to two-handed piercing weapons exclusively. So a pole arm is going to require two-handed piercing as a weapon skill. And pole axes, including the pole axe skill, is going to be being introduced soon as a two-handed slashing option. And pole axes will be usable by Dire Lords. Uh, any idea when clerics will be able to generate and use their celestial pow bond power? Currently, the bars there are useless. It is the bar is there and it is useless. And no, I do not have an ETA on when celestial the celestial power and the celestial bond mechanic will be coming in. It is still planned, but I don't have an ETA yet on when that's coming in. All right. So when the new race comes in. Because, you know, eventually we're going to get a new race, right? Um, will we have to start over or can we switch races on a current character? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, first I want to remind everybody that there are going to be wipes. So don't, ass don't ever assume that any character is permanent right now. No matter how much, no matter how high, how high level it is, no matter how much you've invested in it, please everyone keep that in mind there are going to be wipes now we've said it many times our goal is to not wipe um if we don't have to our goal my ideally uh i would love for chapters to to be wipeless <laughs> uh, and and the uh, you all have the ability to take your characters you know all through the chapter through the various seasons um 
that's that's the goal. And so we have to always remember that there could be things that are introduced or reasons that we need to wipe. Um, so just keep that in mind. That being said, um, the, the to the question, when new races become available, you will need to create a new character to play that race. There's not going to be an option to um, convert your character human to an ogre, for example. Uh, but but the uh, the note there is that it would probably be a wipe before we see those, right? Um, not necessarily. Really? Oh, interesting. All right. So, what does the new version of Replenish do, and why did you change it? Mm. Okay. So. The new version, so Replenish is now a channeled ability. Um, it restores health every second for up to eight seconds while it's being channeled. And it's draining two mana per second as it's channeled. Um, and then in addition to that, Replenish is going to, the, the healing effectiveness of Replenish is going to change based on um, the hot that you have active from your mantle line. Uh, so if you have Mantle of the Mist on a target and you use Replenish, uh, it's going to, you can use Replenish by itself without any Mantle on the target, but if it has Mantle on the target, the healing effectiveness is going to be improved based on what Mantle exists. So Mantle of the Mist is going to provide a little bit of a healing bonus, whereas Mantle of the Stream and Mantle of the River and onwards is going to have an even greater healing uh, bonus to your Replenish. Um, the reason for the change is largely because shaman, we were finding that shaman were able to circumvent a lot of the intended pacing when it came to rest and mana management because the total number of hots that they have and how effective they are were allowing them to sit and recover a lot more mana during combat while their hots did you know, the work for them um, than we intended. It's not to say that, that there shouldn't be any of that happening, but it was more than we intended and certainly when you compare it to um like the cleric for example which is so heavily focused on that single single target healing and unless they're standing and casting you know they're completely dependent on being in a casting mode um which really limits their ability to sit and kind of regenerate during combat um so this change is meant to make replenish number one a bit more of a decision and not just like an automatic assumption um because it has to be channeled uh and also, you know, introduce some interplay there with their mantle lines. Um, but it's also an attempt to balance some of that, um, the resource, the pacing of resource regeneration for the shaman as well. Okay. With the new lighting effects in coming from the moon, which look great, by the way. Thank you, guys. I did them myself. Are there still plans to bring back dual moons? How difficult will it be to tweak the lighting effects from two moons to give off the same look we have today? Yeah, <laughs> Des. That that was yeah, that was Bronson. Sorry guys. Everyone knows that I don't do a whole lot around here. So Terminus has always had twin moons back from you know the earliest, earliest days of the lore of the game and kind of, you know. What Terminus says. So La Launa and Hauta, um, that's how I pronounce it. Uh, it's, um, I'll, I'll spell it in chat here for anybody interested. Launa and Hauta. That's the name of the, the twin moons. Um, so are they coming back? Yes. It's, it's not a, it's not an option. It's, that's, Terminus has two moons, and those two moons are built very deeply into the um, the lore, the setting, kind of the of the world. So um, <laughs> that's no moon. Um, it was nice. It was good. That was good, Mike. I appreciate that one. Um, as far as like when, um, don't have an answer as to when the the twin moons are going to be back up in the sky, and I, I'm. I mean, ultimately, to answer that question, I would say no. It's I don't foresee any difficulties in tweaking the lighting once those are back in play. Um, you know, we have several options on how we handle two moons instead of one. 
and uh, we'll just tackle that when we get to it. The lighting looks good though, right guys? Yay, Bronson. He doesn't just doodle. <laughs> Can we get a status update on the new goblin models? They looked nearly finished and animated when we saw them a few months ago. Yeah, so I'm not exaggerating when I say that we are completely focused on only on the things necessary for the upcoming season, um, without exception. And so as soon as there's another location featuring the goblins, then you'll see them come in and, you know, they'll be updated in the other areas as well as we're working on that. So that's that's just kind of how things roll around here right now. We We have our set scope of work for the season that's coming up. We focus on getting those things done. If it's outside of that scope, then it waits its turn. That's that's good project management. We're getting stuff done. Will the human female character models be updated for season three? No, not for season three. They will be updated sometime in chapter two, along with the introduction of the ogres. Awesome. I think Bronson's having, he called them protuberances. I think he's having trouble with them. What are protuberances? It's, you're going to have to get a dictionary, sir. You said a word and you don't know what it means? I know what it means. I'm not going to explain what protuberances are in a female. The swelly portions. Wait, well, who there said anything go. about a female? I didn't say anything about a female. On the female okay, I'm gonna model, look, I'm gonna they, uh, I'm gonna look this up. On a female human model, Brunson called them protuberances. Oh, okay. He's talking about yeah. the the bunions on their feet. Exactly. Got it. That is Thanks. Exactly I feel it. enlightened. Yeah, you've learned something today. See, I've learned two things. I've 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 remembered what a fedora is. And I've learned that Ben used to sport one, and I've learned about um, the the female foot growths that apparently plague our females. Yeah, and we have to design around those. So, very important. Very important. Indeed. All right. Will cooking and alchemy get actual schematics like other professions, or are you going to leave it to experimentation? Hmm. Well. I mean, I'll leave some of that for Neff. The I know that the goal and kind of the spirit behind both of those is that they would be highly explorative, highly you know based on the discovery aspect. That's that was kind of the vision for cooking, and um, I think alchemy kind of gained some of that along the way. But we want it to be very experimental. So whether we introduce any schematics into that or not, it doesn't change the fact that fundamentally those those two professions are very centered on um, exploration and kind of that whole experimentation process. Cody, no, no, <laughs> that was so bad. You're gonna have to leave, I, you, you're banned, get out. <laughs> okay, with season three coming up next and being the final part of AVP, will we have the next zone coming in in chapter two or will we be in AVP for a while while that gets worked on? So the next zone being worked on after AVP is Halnir Cave. Um, and it's a it's a massive zone. I mean, even as much as we showed of Halnir Cave in the past and streams and various things, there's still aspects of that zone that people haven't explored yet. So um, there's a good amount of art to be done there. There's a good amount of um, you know other things that we want to capitalize on to improve it even further. Um, and so Halner Cave will be dropping either sometime, either in chapter three or possibly in chapter two, season two. Um, but season one of chapter two is gonna actually be focusing on some new classes and the, um, the ogre. That's, that's the first time we heard that, guys. All the beans, all the beans. See, this is why you guys come to these things, right? All right, so do. where does that's why you we do beans. Go ahead. Where does black where does Black Rose Keep <laughs> fall in terms of 
<laughs> All right. Yeah, mm -hmm. we're not going to invite you back, sir. Where <laughs> does Black Rose keep fall in terms of production? I didn't production? mean to interrupt you. What? <laughs> I'm sorry? What? I'm right. just trying to hear what you said. Yeah, yeah. So where does Black Rose keep fall in terms of production? Is it part of ABP or some other place? Ah. Okay, Black Rose Keep is not part of AVP. Black Rose Keep is a standalone zone. It actually includes quite a bit of content in it and landmass area outside of the keep itself. So that is a a distinct zone when that when that comes online. Are you are you finished? No. How many seasons are we expecting for chapter two? At this current moment, I can safely say at least two. At least two for chapter two. Go ahead. I, is it my turn? Hmm? Oh, okay. Yeah. Awesome. All right. So first, we just... This is a little shout out to our new TikTok. If you guys haven't looked, go uh, go find it, follow it. We have a new TikTok and Fire is working on a series with Jabba to cover each of the tenants. Um, this question came up today, actually, and I wanted to throw it in there, but because it's relevant. Content is king. What are some of the specific examples of different types of horizontal content and progression that we can expect to see in Pantheon? What's in the works and what's planned for the future? Joppa, go. You taking that one? I don't know. <laughs> did, did you say I don't? I won't? I don't know. I, I can take that one. I, I I'm I just, yeah. One. Yeah. Thank you. Thank okay. you. I yeah. wanted to give you a chance to speak. Thanks. I appreciate that. Um, what are the, okay, well, we've talked about this quite a bit and, and two of the main things, two of the main like pillars of that answer are crafting and gathering and perception. Both those two systems exist as like serious um, alternate paths in kind of that horizontal direction where um, you'll be able to go very deeply into both of those systems, irrespective of your, you know, vertical movement. Um, so b both of those and everything that makes up, you know, those two systems are a big part of what the horizontal progression aspects of Pantheon is. In addition to that, um, the the traversal systems are a big part of it. That was initially kind of the vision behind those in general, whether it be climbing, whether it be the, the underwater um, content and just interaction with water in general whether it be um, you know, even some of the, the more advanced kind of you know, later in, in the life of the character systems, like you know, access to something like a glide, gliding or um, things like that, uh, certain items that allow you to, to, to do things a little bit more effectively, like you know, jump height and jump distance and certain things, um, the traversal abilities that classes have, so things like length of rope, vine woven, vine -woven bridge, um, these types of things, all of that points to a an, an emphasis on exploration, an emphasis on discovery through exploration that is a really deep-seated kind of pillar of what Pantheon is is striving to be, a game where you can, you know, the, the goal would be a game where you can waste hours lost in just exploring over the next, you know, hill or under the next bridge or behind the next tree or in you know this cave or this dungeon or this uh, city or castle or wherever it may be to you know just see what you will find and then find things that are meaningful um find things that actually matter whether it's storylines or bits about the world the lore things that you know you're able to find and discover just by right of your own explore exploring that's a big part of that horizontal offering as well that um again coming back to that main idea of pantheon being in essence, more of a world than a game, or at least our approach to it being so, then we're counting on things like that mattering to our players. That, you know, finding more out about the world, more out about the game, you know, other than just getting that next level, that we want to have plenty of content in there to 
for that to happen as well. So that would be maybe a shorter form answer to that. That was the short form? Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. So what's the level? <laughs> Go ahead. I have zero doubt. I have zero doubt. <laughs> what, what's the level range for Hangor? And that's two Gs, right? Hangor has two Gs. Yes, it does. Uh, level range is it's around level 25 to 32 in that range. There will be um, a few exceptions to that that are actually a little bit higher level than 32, but that's kind of the core core range. Any new fractures in the frigid climate? No. Not, not a, no. Not a no. Is that, is that the long form answer of no? That, yeah, that's, it's more like the mid form answer. No, Excellent. not a no. You know? Yeah, I do know. I do know. Mm -hmm. All right. So currently group XP works to be around six to 10. So wow, they do math. Six to 10 times faster than trying to solo. If you can't get a group due to time zone, you might as well log off. This is bad for encouraging people to keep playing. Will you look at adjusting the solo versus group XP mechanics based on some feedback? Not right now. Uh, and the, the decision to go to that was for testing. And it was a decision based on the kind of behavior that we saw in earlier testing sessions, like much earlier testing sessions back in like PA1, PA2, PA3, kind of in that era where um, players ultimately are going to do the thing that they are more incentivized to do. And if players can level faster solo or level faster in smaller groups, then it limited dramatically how much full group activity that we we had. Um, so what we're finding right now is that we still see plenty of smaller groups forming and smaller groups doing things, but we actually have a much larger amount of full groups doing things, which is ultimately you know where we're wanting to get the most data in terms of what players are able to accomplish and how you know how easily how difficult they're able to do that again our focus right now isn't purely on um balance but it doesn't mean that we're not gleaning a lot of information along the way um, as testing is going on okay if the next chapter is going to focus on classes and races as you just dropped will we see the old zones get some polish from team bravo or does the art team need to focus on creating hellnir and the silent plane stuff yeah you're, you're gonna see not a whole lot of old zone polish um the, that and that that could change but right now and for the foreseeable several drops of content several seasons into the next chapter we're going to be full steam ahead so um, it does not mean that there is not obviously polish and Team Bravo work to be done, but right now we're a lot of, I mean, a lot of Team Bravo is Team um, Alpha, you know, right now too, that are are pushing things forward. And as we are able to grow and as we're able to fill out more of a rank of like a Team Bravo and even a Team Charlie, then we'll see more and more of that. But right now the emphasis is on full steam ahead and pulling, you know, resources to support that. Yep, got to get a game made, guys. Um, will we be working on placeable light sources, like sticking a torch to the cave wall? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, it's just it's just not a priority kind of thing. Um, so, if you'll remember in the eval dungeon that we did, there were torches that you could pull off of the wall. So you could go by and pick up a torch and kind of carry it around. Um, it's uh, the ability to do the reverse of that um, is something that we'd like to have down the line. We've talked about like the the flare uh, the ranger, you know, burning arrow that they can shoot into the ground as a light source. Um, we've obviously got, you know, 
uh, equipment based life sources when you find like a glowing sword or um, like the ranger also has a reagent uh, based uh, weapon coating called uh, bright fire sap which they coat their weapon in bright fire sap then it turns it into a light source and there's different things like that um, that's not necessarily a droppable light source but um, like I said recently our goal right now is to get the very sim simple light sources in a good place and a consistent place and then we'll have the foundation we want to start adding some of the more nuanced uh, lighting uh, lighting items and techniques and, and systems. Will there be any modifiers on torches to dispel gloom? No. No. Gloom is, is not, I think I mentioned this too, that the current, the current fracture that is, is the, our gloom fracture is actually closer in look and feel to what the darkness fracture will be like. So there will be, um, there will be s certain items that will cut through that and dispel some of that, at least in a radius around your character which will, will cause, you know, that radius around you to look normal, um, or at least not normal, but at least brighter and, and things more visible. The, um, the gloom fracture itself visually will eventually shift to look much more like um, something like the Lost Woods in Breath of the Wild, where you have more of like a smoky, swirling, fog, mist type scenario. And there will be you know, a, a slight area around your character where you'll be able to see a little bit more clearly, but then the mists will kind of choke everything from a distance, and that'll be more like what gloom is is going to look like eventually, and then darkness will kind of, you know, take on the current form of, of gloom. And then the fun yeah, thing is I, not knowing where some of these fractures will pop up, because gloom is very focused on um, undead, and it's one of the few fractures that have a pretty consistent like anchor point in the world like something that would cause it to exist so you can kind of plan fairly certainly on where gloom will exist in the world whereas the other fractures and most fractures are meant to be by nature very erratic and uh, unpredictable and so where you might stumble into and find a, a darkness fracture you can't really plan for and and it's not always going to be in the same place either and so it's it's I'm, I'm excited when we get those dynamic fractures in um and just kind of how that'll change kind of the feel of traversing around the world because randomly you're running along you've been through there you know a hundred times and then boom all of a sudden it's like you've kind of transitioned into this area of pitch darkness and the kind of things that can spawn in there and, and it's just very different um that'll be really cool that will be really cool i love that um Will class race restrictions be in play as races are added? Yes. Yep. Yay. Uh, could you talk about any significant changes that are upcoming for gathering and crafting in season three? I can say I know there are some, but I'm not going to try to go into what they are. I know that's something that we'll, we'll hit on in the patch notes. We, we're going to do a really big drop of kind of the upcoming changes in the patch notes. So that would be the place to look. Yeah. Neff is really good about like laying out that information. So if you guys want to know things, you know, you can tag Neff and ask him. Uh, can we hope to see our characters on the Avenger server? Uh, be made into legacy characters so that we can take them beyond launch and keep them for future testing purposes. Not at the moment, no. I don't, I don't I'm not going to say that might not change. And we've actually had a few conversations internally about, you know, some things that we could do with, you know, some of these characters, or at least some of the time that you guys are investing in testing and, um, but we don't have anything solid just yet. Um, do we have any updates on guild tools and chat filters in game? No, unfortunately not. Not yet. It's it's really, really high on my want list. Um, but we just haven't been able to justify poking it through to that top spot just yet. But it's it's really key. 
that especially the guild functionality that we get that in. Um, so stay tuned. Okay, what's the word on having a set level functionality for improved testing efficiency? Not likely. Uh, that doesn't mean that we won't get to a point where we have we won't have NPCs that you can talk to that will set your level and gear you out with current gear. I mean, we already have things like that working internally, anyway. Um, but uh, giving players like an actual like set level command where they can choose what level that's that's not likely to happen at any point. Okay, so did you happen to see Too Tired to Care's um, Mad Run Challenge run? No, I didn't. Can somebody um, please make sure I see that? Yeah, yeah, because uh, you're going to have to... He did a lot of practicing first, but you'll have to look at the most recent one to see if okay. uh, that meets your requirements. Just somebody send me a link. I will check it out. Link, I'm too tired. All right, that's all the questions I got. You guys got anything else? I'm gonna I'm gonna drop something in here. Maybe you can um, let people know what these are. I am interested in seeing um, if too tired can link me the the video and then uh, also kind of break down how the equation that he put out earlier has changed based on tonight. If there's been any change in that equation? It'd be cool to see. Okay, All right, I just cool. dropped some shots in there. Would you let them know what they're looking at? I will in just a second. Hold on. Okay. All right, what do we got here? Oh, cool. All right, yeah. So the first image you see there is in the um, icy cave uh, outlet of, of a cave that, that opens up right underneath the Usharuk's throne room you can see the graded floor above that is the Usharuk's throne room so that's kind of the the main boss of hangor is the Usharuk. and right beneath her throne room you can see down into this area where um for those of you that i, I won't spoil it i guess but there is something rather large that they keep down in there um and part of the updates to hangor are going to be figuring out how to actually get down to that section we opted to not have the floor opened in the usharuk's room like we had historically because it just created a lot of issues with pathing and exploiting different things so we've we've sectioned off the two areas you'll be able to see down into it and uh, something i think is really cool is you know you've got a group in the usharuk's room doing that content and then you may have a group down below doing the wyvern and you can kind of see both groups at the same time which is really cool up stuff like that um but yeah this this is that room the uh Let's say, oh, there's, yeah, there's the Usharuk throne room right above it. So that graded floor is uh, right underneath the character there. And then um, then we got the orcs. We got a fresh uh, paint job done on the orcs, on the, the skin texture, and they're looking great. And um, got some animation work happening on them right now as we speak in prep for uh, Hangor to open up. Man, that guy looks good. Yeah, yeah. It's gonna be a cool area. Right. And you can imagine like this area being in the midst of this like frigid, frozen climate. So, you know, the wind, the, the snow falling outside, like the, you know, it's gonna be, I'm, sure, I'm really excited about that. Really excited for us to get an area of the game in that feels like it's in this like completely different climate. And we've got the visuals and the audio all kind of working together to make that as immersive as we're we're wanting it to be so it's going to be a really good step uh can you confirm what classes are coming in the next update yeah um, it's going to be summoner and ranger
And is it just going to be the ogre, ogre race? The ogre ha. That was that was really fancy. I enjoyed that. I yeah, that was well. You said it. That was really nice. The <laughs> the ora ha, ora ha. Um, is that gonna what? What was the question? Sorry, what was the actual question? Is that is that the only race that's gonna be in the next? Ah yes, the ogre is the only new race that's being introduced. But there's going to be some updates to the human male and female models along with that, and some nice new updates to armor. Um, it's going to be really good. It'll be really good. Yeah. When gnome. When gnome. Uh, can't tell you. Can't tell you just yet. Because I doesn't do know. know. Yep. But I mean, if you get a couple new classes and a new race, that'll hold you for guys, guys, for just a little while, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, getting that range combat system is going to be sweet. Will that include range stuff for other classes? Mm -hmm. uh, how big is Hangor compared to the Gobby Caves? Oh gosh, it's <laughs> it's it's bigger. It's definitely bigger because you have to factor in. The not the entire lead up to Hangor, but before you even get to Hangor itself, there's quite a few cave systems in and around kind of the area leading up to it, like right outside of it, that are orc um, populated with orcs. Um, then you've got Hangor itself with you know the arena, um, kind of the the main part of the the village, if you will. You've got the Tusk area with, you know, the, the Primalists and the Seers hanging out there. You've got a very large cave system that's been expanded since last time that connects you from the proper area of the village around and through into the Usharuk's um, kind of war hut. And uh, it's it's very large. So, yeah, it it, I mean, it's, I don't know. I mean, I would say it's like four or five times larger. Oh, dang. Uh, any new loot on Agonoct? <laughs> Plan? <laughs> uh, I want their loot. There'll, yeah, there'll be some new loot on Agonoct. Um, probably not in this next patch, this kind of intro season patch, but with season three, yeah, there'll be some some more itemization on her. We'll also have fixed the loot table for um, the other named spider in Mad Run that currently doesn't drop what it's supposed to drop. So there will be some new itemization in Mad Run one, with this next upcoming patch. But Aganoct will be more um, built out loot-wise by season three, and she'll also be a little bit tougher. I was gonna say if we're putting new loot on her, she needs to be she needs to be harder. I, I feel mm -hmm. like she's getting killed too way too much right now. Yep, agreed. Um, when can we expect any perception updates? That is a big one to stay tuned to. So that's gonna be a focus in chapter two is getting that kind of wheel rolling again. And then you'll start to see, once that is kind of re-implemented in full, then you'll start to see a lot more consistent updates on that front as we move along from there. But stay tuned, be more on that in uh, chapter two. Um, it was mentioned earlier that Hangor is meant to be another high level area, but what about the lead up to Hangor, um, which used to be nine to 14, is that the same, is it changed? No, that's gonna be a lot higher level now. All right. The content gap is real, but uh, one of the changes that we're going to be having soon as well is some changes to experience gain in general. I think I can't remember the last few places I've mentioned this, but I, I'm 
eager for it to feel much more EQ like um, in that uh, you are spending less time. You're not killing as many things as rapidly and you're getting more experience per kill um, as a result. And then just generally increasing the speed of, of EXP a little bit in general, even beyond some of those changes so that you won't be stuck at these levels as long um, as you are currently. So um, Halnir Cave is the true um, emancipation from the current content gap. And I'm, I'm trying to hold out I'm trying to be strong and hold out, you know, for that, because I, 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 I think we're going to be fine once that's in place. Um, but hopefully, some of these EQ or these E what happened in my brain. These hopefully some of these experience changes will help kind of alleviate some of the pain right now people are feeling from the in that kind of mid-teens range. Yeah, the the bottleneck is is been really hard on the players i think and also the uh fight for content in the early mid 20s but with new content coming that all is just going to be eased oh yeah when are we gonna see the death penalty back yeah we've talked about that internally a, a few times lately and my stance is still that I, I don't feel like it's the right time yet uh, with, you know, especially with Halnir Cave on the horizon. That's It's such a difficult dungeon. There's so many deaths and lots of really important pathing and, uh, you know, things that we're going to need to work through in there to kind of solidify some of our cramped, you know, dungeon uh, pathing code and tech and all that and so I, I don't i still don't think it's quite the right time i feel it along with everybody else i mean it's a great case study for why death penalties are so important because of the nonchalant way people play it just kind of takes a lot of that fire and that incentive out of it so i, I feel that very much um i just think getting hounder cave in getting that area kind of really dialed in will be a good cue for us to say okay i think we're we're at the point now where you know we're not seeing as much uh, unintentional player deaths due to game mechanics and issues and bugs, and we've got a lot of the pathing stuff in play, and the game just feels a lot more watertight and a lot more um, predictable in terms of outcomes. Not to say that there's not plenty of ways to make mistakes and whatnot, but um, I think at that stage we'll be ready to take a closer look at getting the death penalty back in. That said, before the death penalty itself comes back in, we might bring corpse, um, like corpse, uh, leaving a corpse when you die, not because you've lost experience or your gears on your corpse yet, but we might have like a temporary item that spawns on the corpse so that we can start testing some things like corpse pulling, like corpse retrieval and, um, you know, some of that how all that uh, works out. So, uh, yeah, stay tuned on that front. We also did, um, Steve Clover just recently made a really important tweak that I think will make a lot of people happy with um, changing the range at which you are given loot rights and experience if you're in a group from 50 meters to 300 meters. So there's now actually, you, you don't have to be right on top of everybody to actually get credit. For something that dies, you can uh, pullers rejoice and all that good stuff. Hey, that's excellent. Um, Bronson, I very much enjoy your way with words. I don't, you should have been a writer, sir. All right. Are you so talking this about is the, the... the butt clenching moments? Yeah, yeah. I love that our community really wants their death penalty back. I love that. But also, yeah, yeah Bronson. He has just the way he puts things, protuberances, butt clenching. He's a poet. That's, yeah, it's protuberances is similar to, um, what's the word? Um, never mind. It's not coming to me. What's the word? It's going to drive me crazy. Crenellations. Crenellations. That's the word. Crenellations. Very good. All right, one more question, and then we will wrap this up. Uh, warriors, um, 
When will they get rounded out and chant her charm? When? This is the when? last one, guys. When? Uh, yeah, I can't. I can't say when yet. I. I can't. I can't give you an answer to that yet. We don't. We don't have an answer for that yet. I know. Again, the the focus right now are is on moving things forward as much as we can. We've got new classes about to come out. We've got the Summoner and the Ranger coming out um, soon. Um, there, there absolutely needs to be time to circle back and fill out these classes as we have as we continue to move along. That will happen, but right now, it's just let's let's keep getting things that are not in the game yet in, and uh, we're going to keep moving in that mindset for a little bit here. Uh, until it's time. Yeah, it's a good mindset. It's uh, where are we going with the seasons and getting stuff done? It's I love it. I think it's been great. All right, guys, we're going to wrap it up. Thank you, Chris Perkins, for coming here and answering all these questions. Yeah, loved it. Thank you, Jamie Henry. Thank you, everybody. All right, guys. Thank you for coming.